Okay, so in this problem, we're told two masses, MA equals 35 kilograms and MB equals 38 kilograms, are connected by a rope that hangs over a pulley, as shown in the figure. The pulley is a uniform cylinder of radius 0.381 meters and mass 3.1 kilograms. Initially, MA is on the ground and MB rests 2.5 meters above the ground. If the system is released, use conservation of energy to determine the speed of MB just before it strikes the ground. Assume pulley bearing is frictionless. So uh, the first thing you always want to do is draw what's going on here. So I went ahead and drew the figure. And so what do we have here? So we have two blocks, MA and MB, and they're going to be connected by this pulley here. So we know the pulley is frictionless here. Uh, and then we're given some information about this system. So we're given the masses of each of the blocks. We're given the radius of our pulley and the mass of the pulley. And so we know this block MB is going to sit 2.5 meters above uh, this ground level right here. And so let's talk about what's going to happen uh, when we release this system. So we know initially it's going to start at rest. So you're going to have the block here and the block here. And then when you release the system, this block is going to go downwards while this block is going to go upwards. Right. And that's going to be because the mass of block B is greater. Therefore, the force due to gravity is going to pull it down more. Uh, and then this one will get pulled up with it since it's less. And so we know that's going to happen. And uh, right before it hits the ground, that's when we're trying to find the velocity of it. So they want us to find the velocity of this block here, B, uh, right before it hits the ground. And so that's what we're going to be finding. Uh, let's talk about how we're going to do it now. So in order to do this, we're going to use the law of conservation of energy, which basically tells us energy can neither be created nor destroyed, which means the energy at the beginning of the system, right, initially, has to be equal to the energy uh, at the end of the system. So at two points, you can pick the energy and they basically have to be equal, right? Because energy can either be created or destroyed, right? So they must be equal. And so now that we know that, uh, let's talk about how we're going to solve this. So uh, there's going to be three different forms of energy that we use to plug into this. So we're going to have kinetic energy. And so the formula for that is one half mv squared. There's going to be potential energy, which we didn't note with you, which is equal to mgh. And then the final form of energy is rotational kinetic energy, right? We can denote this with kr. The formula for it is one half i omega squared so that's the formula for it let me write that in i omega squared right where i is the inertia of our pulley and omega is the angular velocity and so uh, what we want to do is look at the energy of the system initially so we know each of these are going to have kinetic energy so we'll call it one half v initial a right for block a squared and then keep in mind let me write this like this v initial a squared so this is the kinetic energy of block a now let's write the kinetic energy of block B. So m one half m b v i b squared. Let's write the potential for each of them. So one half m g m a g h a. Right. This is initial. So all I'm doing is basically just writing out um, each of theirs. So notice the block's going to have kinetic, kinetic. Each of these are going to have kinetic. They're each going to have potential. Uh, and then just the pulley is only going to have rotational kinetic energy. It doesn't have uh, either of these. So just writing them all out, we have MB, G, H, I, B. So this is the kinetic energy for both the blocks, the potential for both the blocks. And then we also want to add in the rotational kinetic energy for the, uh, for the uh, pulley there. And so this is going to be the total energy initially. But there's going to be some things here, and I'm going to explain them in a second. So obviously, this is going to be equal to E final right, because the initial is equal to the final. All we did was just add up each of the types of energy in this system, right, to get the total energy initially. Uh, but here's what you got to notice. Notice, initially, it's going to start from rest. Therefore, the velocity of this uh, and the velocity of this, v, v initial a and v initial b, are both zero, right? So if these terms are zero, they're both going to go away, right? Because because it's starting from rest, uh, it's not moving. Therefore, there's no kinetic energy. Uh, the same goes for the pulley. Uh, we know omega is dependent on the velocity, right? Because V equals omega R. Therefore, uh, obviously, omega equals V over R. Therefore, if this thing isn't moving, right, it's not rotating at all. Therefore, uh, there's no uh, rotational kinetic energy in the beginning either. So this term also goes away. And then finally, notice how uh, whenever you do potential energy, you need to set a height at which you have as your reference point. In this case, I'm going to choose this, uh, the ground to be our reference point. Therefore, notice block A is right on the ground. Therefore, its height is just zero, right? And then we would say the height of block B is 2.5, right? Because it's 2.5 meters off the ground. So whatever its distance off the ground is, is what we're saying H is. 
And so if h uh, initial a is 0, since it's on the ground, this whole term is going to go to 0 if h is 0, right? Because you're multiplying by 0. Therefore, you get the initial energy of the system is solely equal to the potential energy of block B. So you have MB, uh, we're just going to call it MBGH, right? Where H is the height. And so, uh, yeah, so H is 2.5, just keep that in mind. Where G is just the acceleration due to gravity, and then MB is just the block, or the mass of block B. So basically, we just reduce this down to just the potential energy, since everything else is equal to zero, since it's at rest. And so now we have the initial energy of our system, and now we want to calculate the final energy. So once again, we're going to do the same thing, but with the final uh, values. So we have 1 half ma v final a squared plus 1 half mb uh, v final b squared plus mb or ma gh final a plus mb gh final b. So there's the kinetic for each of them. There's the potential. And then 1 half i ome uh, omega squared, right? And so we know these two are going to be equal. This is the initial, and then this is the final. Now let's figure out what we can eliminate. So uh, the only one we can actually eliminate here is the potential energy of block B, right? Because keep in mind, it's going to go to the ground. So at, right before it hits the ground is where uh, we're finding this, right? That's where we're setting the final to be. And so uh, we know that at this point, it's going to be right before it hits the ground. So its height is going to be zero. And so just like for uh, A, its block is going to be, or its height is zero. Therefore, this term is just going to get eliminated. Uh, and then, yeah, so now this is our equation. And so what we're going to want to do is solve for VB, or V final B, which is the final velocity of block B. And uh, yeah, so now there's a trick to this problem. So you need to know that V final A, V final B, and omega final are all going to be related. Now, how is this? So we know the length of the cord on the pulley is going to be constant. It's not going to change. Therefore, if that's the case, the uh, velocity of each of the items in the system are going to be the same no matter what. So the velocity of block B right before it hits the ground is going to be the same as the velocity of block A when it goes upwards, right, at that same point. So that's since the cord is the same length and it's connected by a pulley like this, we know it's going to be, they're all going to be the same. Therefore, V final A, V final B uh, are going to be equal. And then another trick, omega final, as I said before, or sorry, V equals omega R. So V final equals omega final times the radius. Therefore, we can replace omega final uh, if we divide both sides by R by just the final velocity divided by the radius. And so we're going to replace each of these terms uh, like that. And so uh, now that we've got that, uh, let's go ahead and rewrite this. So we have MBGH is equal to, and then... Uh, what we're going to want to do is combine these two. So you're going to have 1 half MA plus MB. And then you just have the V finals. All I'm doing is factoring them out. So you have V final squared. Uh, since I said before, these are the same value. Then you have plus MA GH, right? Because keep in mind, H final A is the same as H. They're both going to be 2.5 meters, right? Because if this goes down 2.5 meters, this has to go up 2.5. So hopefully that makes sense there. Uh, and then we have plus one half i omega final, as I said before, is v final over r squared. And so the only term we need to replace here is uh, the initial, the uh, the inertia. Sorry. So we know the inertia since they tell us this is a cylindrical, right, a uniform. Uh, let me see what they say. They say it is a uniform cylinder. So. You need to look in your book and look at the formulas for inertia, depending on the type of shape or depending on the object. For this one, it's going to be 1 half mr squared. So for a pulley, you almost always use this uh, 1 half mr squared. So we would replace uh, the inertia with that. Um, what I'm going to do, though, is just actually solve for it because I think it's a bit easier to do. And uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and do that. So we have 1 half multiplied by the mass. So this is mass of the pulley which in this case is 3.1 multiplied by the radius squared. So we know the radius is 0.381, so they give us that information. So let me go ahead and plug this in my calculator. So 0.5 times 3.1 times 0.381 squared. So it's going to be equal to 0.2249999. So we'll just say 0.225. Right, so this is going to be your inertia here. And so uh, now that we've got that, 
right? And keep in mind the units, this is going to be kilograms per meter squared or kilograms times meter squared, um, right? Because we have kilograms for mass and then uh, the radius is written in meters. And so now what we got to do is we know every term in here uh, except for V final. So all we got to do is get V final by itself, uh, which uh, is what we got to do now. So the way I'm going to do it is rewrite this. So MBGH equals one half. And so I'm actually just going to start plugging in the values because uh, it's going to make it much easier to simplify. So we have MB, uh, which is the mass of MB or the mass of block B, which is 38. Yeah, 38 times G, which is 9.8, right? Just the acceleration to gravity times the height, which is how far the block was up at the beginning, 2.5 meters is equal to one half. Uh, block A is 35, so 35 plus 38 multiplied by V final squared plus MA, which I said was 35 times 9.8. H again is 2.5, right? As I said before, it, it goes up the same amount of distance as B goes down. Uh, and then plus one half times our inertia, which we just found to be 0.225, right? And then you have V final squared over uh, the radius squared of our pulley, which was 0.381, yeah. And so this is value squared. So uh, let's go ahead and simplify this now. So we have 38 times 9.8 times 2.5. That'll give us 931 equals 35 plus 38 divided by 2 is 36.5 multiplying that by v final squared plus 35 times 9.8 times 2.5 which is 857.5 uh, and then we have plus so uh, 0.5 times 0.225 divided by 0.381 squared let me do that again, divided by 0 0.381 squared. So it's going to be plus 0.775 V final squared. And so now it's going to be much easier to actually solve for. So uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is minus this to the other side. So 931 minus 857.5 is 73.5 equals 36.5. Uh, plus or v final squared plus 0.775 v final squared. Now what we can do is factor out a v final from both of these terms. So it's going to be 36 point or sorry, v final squared 36.5 plus 0.775, uh, and then you would just divide by this. So we have 73.5 divided by 36, I didn't write the 0.5 there, my bad. 36.5 plus 0.775. Yeah, so you'll get V final squared equals 1.97183. And then you would just square root this value uh, to get rid of that square. So you're going to get V final is the square root of whatever that was, which is going to be... 1.4 1 1.404 so keep in mind i rounded some of these values so it might get a little different but it should be pretty similar to this uh, it's going to be about 1.4 uh, meters per second so keep in mind i rounded these values when i plugged them in and stuff so you might get a little different but it should be 1.4 so you might get like 1.41 but keep in mind if you just round it's going to be 1.4 so uh, yeah, so 1.4 meters per second, that's going to be the velocity of your block B right before it hits the ground. So uh, yeah, just a quick rundown of how we did this. Uh, we knew we we're going to use the law of conservation of energy, right? And then we looked at the different forms of energy, we looked at them in the beginning, looked at them at the end. Uh, and then it was just really a matter of knowing V final, you could rewrite or all the velocities are going to be the same, and then rewriting omega final uh, in terms of its velocity. And then just plugging it in and yeah and then you would just solve for it and uh yeah so not that not that difficult as long as you know that trick there and uh yeah so 1.4 meters per second that's going to be your velocity all right keep in mind it is downwards uh but yeah so this is going to be your answer and hopefully you found this uh video useful